and welcome to VAT XP. This is a slightly different type of thing that we're doing today. I am actually heading out to the desert for a bit of dune bashing. And I thought I'd take you guys with me. So it's 4.45 and we're already late. We're catching up with Ronak from RK Drives because my Jeep's in the shop, so we're going to be hitchhiking with him. Uh, so yeah, 4.45, I've told him I'm already on the way, so I'll catch you on the way. So Ronix arrived in his beast, which is this beautiful lifted Pajero. What's up? What's up, long time no see. How's it going? All good. Right, so we are on the way to the destination and uh, Ronak's going to tell us more about what's going on with his Pajero, what kits and more, what mods do you have in the car? Uh, I'm just running a 2 inch DJM lift kit mm -hmm. and uh, just off some off-road lights, skid plates and yeah that's about it, that's the job. Very healthy car and uh, I've seen this car perform in the desert like no other Pajero I've seen so stay tuned and we'll see how this goes so we've made it to the spot and the first thing that we need to do is deflate down deflate down to 12 to 15 Why do we deflate the tires, Ronak? So that you have a wider track in the desert. If you have inflated tires, just charge it, sink into the sand. There you go. So, the so that's the trivia as to why we need to deflate our cars before we get into the desert. Uh, we've got some fine company here. A couple of groups have come out actually, and the weather is actually very good. It's uh, 32, 33, but feels better than that people are still rolling in uh, one more thing I want to talk about when we're in the desert is either you could wear specialized shoes like what Ronix wearing or you just burn your feet or you burn your feet <laughs> or amateurs like me we wear something like this which is a closed thing yeah close closed works regardless closed works yeah one of one of these times i actually showed up in slippers and safe to say that my feet weren't very happy so we're gonna go ahead and deflate all four wheels make sure that we're running the same pressure all, all across and uh, the way that we actually deflate this is we have a small little screwdriver that actually removes the valve so the air just pops out super quick that's how your tire profile looks like with 15 psi. Go ahead and do all the others now. So next up we're gonna be putting up the flag. As you can see, which is that thing over there. Uh, the idea with the flag is to give your car better visibility when you're inside the dunes. So for example, the car's height is still here, but you can see the flag extends all the way there. So the idea is if you're actually inside a dune and um, you can see the car from a far off distance as well. So these flags are there that give you better visibility when you're on the dunes. Uh, you can see, you can see that when this guy goes down, you might not be able to see the car, but you can see his flag, which lets you know that there's a car there and you can be more careful. So they are usually stuck in using the two ways you can do it. Either you could put in a suction mount like this, which will hold it on in place against your glass. Or some guys also have a mount that's here. It's there for a more uh, permanent solution. But me personally as well, I've got the same glass mount. Didn't want to drill holes on the car's body for anything. The other most important thing which we really need to be taking care of is making sure that everything in the car, around the car, is all tied in. So it will avoid bouncing around things. 
Uh, Ronex also got a very good recovery gear. So if you've seen his air compressor. Air compressor, ropes, battery cables, everything. The jumper cable is also a good thing to have. And these are actually soft, soft, soft shackles. shackles. Soft shackles and these are the, this is the kinetic kinetic, kinetic rope, rope, right? Yes. Yeah. Less pressure on your car's chassis. Yes. Much better for recovery. And even these soft shackles, they're very good because there've been some horrific incidents where the shackles actually flown away, and it's actually a D ring, which is a big metal. So if that hits you, it's very bad. So these the, these soft shackles, and then this kinetic rope actually keeps thing. So we're just gonna tie down everything at the back here. Make sure that the nothing's flying around because the car is gonna be jumping around a lot. Uh, more guys coming in now. Well, actually, good. It seems almost like it's cloudy there. So let's see how it goes. So you see what I was telling you about the flags. There's a high dune here, and right at the dune, you can see the flags, but you can't see the cars. But that's the flag that serves the purpose. As soon as you go, come up this dune, you can see the cars. So communicating in the desert obviously is a challenge. So we use these walkie-talkies. And most important bit of desert. equipment. Driving with a crew in the desert. Correct. So no communication, you're gonna get stuck or you're gonna get lost and yeah. a lot of nonsense might happen. So this walkie-talkie you tune into a certain frequency which is pre-decided by the group. You can see the display here. And then people just start talking or just start giving a direction. You can see someone's already started out there. So yeah, we'll be talking about some off-roading basics yes. on the way if we have the opportunity slash time. Sure. And we'll see what we can do. Let's go. So, so tell us about the gears. So 2H is normal two wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And then 4H is 30-70 uh, split. So just that's 30% in the front or 70, it's, it just splits. Okay. And then what I drive with is the 4H LC, which is a 50-50 power split center diff. And okay. then whenever you're in a sticky situation or you need more traction, you get 4H LC. So you get higher revs and more traction on getting out. So it's almost like a four-wheel low. Yes, that's the, that's the four-wheel low itself. Four oh, LLC. Okay. Gotcha. And then I pull the traction plug out, so I have hundred percent traction. Otherwise, the um, the normal factory traction kill switch is only sixty percent. So it, you need hundred percent no traction. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck for sure. <laughs> And then there is rear diff lock if you want more momentum while climbing or you need more uh, traction when you're stuck. That's about it. And you should be good if you're driving a Pajero. <laughs> <laughs> and what's our friend in the desert? Don't fight gravity. Don't fight gravity and yeah. momentum, momentum, momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum. And water. 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 <laughs> yes, you need water. Never forget to get something to drink, eat. Regardless so, if you're going to the desert 15 minutes or one hour, just pick up, just stock up on everything possible. Keep your sugar, keep your everything yeah. in uh, perfect sync. Yep. Alrighty. So, convoy is active. We've been told that this is a... Pajero clear. Small drop, but clearly was it. So this is the newbie drive where we're just getting to grips with how the car behaves. What the guys are doing. And we're also driving on manual before so we have better control of the power. So for a second, for a second.
drop. Because his thing was, uh, he had a misfire or something. Nice drop there. So the key is momentum, lots of courage. That's a big drop for that. And you'll see how the flag plays a. Uh, so this is something which is very common. Sheldon's gonna be with you shortly to help you So one of the ways that he can actually recover from here, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, Ranak, is he yeah. can put it in reverse, slide the back back, and then it. Yeah. yeah. So one of the ways that he can correct now that he's stuck there is just put it in. Uh, reverse and let the back slide out yeah just put in reverse turn the steering wheel left and then tap on the accelerator you should be out and it will come out from there so one of the good things about driving in a convoy is you always have experienced guys waiting for you and uh, you always know that there's help at hand why you got stuck like that yeah when you're going like this you you you're parallel to the car you need to push others that's not like that so now also you can get out but let them tell you how to do it so we've got the marshal now that's going to instruct him to get out of that sticky situation uh, this is one of the best things about the drive is, you know, they obviously help you out. Of course, the car is at an angle, as you can see. So, so much so that even the door is not closing in. So, it is a scary situation when you're inside the car, you're actually looking at it like this. So, it is a bit scary. And let's watch how we manage to recover this. Put it in reverse, put the steering on the left, just nice and easy, reverse it out and go back straight. How do you know what's on the other side? It's all just uh, <laughs> from driving. <laughs> Whoa! Literally couldn't see on the other side. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good job, Rashad. Good job. So, this is a bit of a Drop here, yeah. okay. Thanks, buddy. So, 
So when we do this drop, we start powering up from the midpoint, as you can see now. That is to give us enough momentum to go up. At full power. Now all clear, buddy. Now if you had come full speed on top of that dune, you would have flown. Yeah. So which is why we braked a little bit. You need to think 10 steps ahead. There's so much thought process and there is so much technicalities that goes into this that it really keeps you on your toes. Yeah. You need to be two steps ahead of what the car's gonna be what doing the car next. Is gonna do. So I think we can take it from the side. Loop it. Yeah, there you go. Loop it. And just so we are clear, there's no mods on the engine. It's only the suspension. Only suspension, yes. It's a 3.8 uh, V6. With a very skilled driver. <laughs> <laughs> if you think so. <laughs> so it's the stock Pajero and we're driving in uh, manual gears. A lot of courage, momentum. Not saying that your stock Pajero could do this, but if you have someone like this, it, it could. Any car stock can do it. It's just, you need to learn. Yeah. You need to do it every week. Exactly. Plus, I think the suspension plays a big role. Oh, yes. Yeah. If, if you're running stock suspension, stock suspension, you're going to be... Not even suspension. It's just a two-inch lift. So yeah. You're a little bit off the ground, so you have more clearance. Especially, I think, when we take the angle front the angle dips. And then this like this dips uh, not this but okay yeah something like that correct you need a front you ground clearance because when i was stock stock suspension yeah i used to always get crested on correct because the height was not much so i used to go sit on top so right. now i can just clear it easily correct yeah that's a good piece of advice weather's pretty decent also weather is good today you okay nickel Bro. Good job so far. So we take breaks in the middle for a while just to make sure that the cars are cooling down, keeping up in the corners. the high power dunes here we need a lot of power 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 and it's all the game of momentum yes So once you've done dune bashing, the ABS traction control fuse needs to go back in. Some people have a kill switch. You have the option of a kill switch or you could just pull the fuse out. It does the same job. This fuse. Which fuse is it? There you go. Just pull it. It cuts 100% traction. No airbags, no nothing. So the... I like men. So the airbag switch or the switch that you have which actually kills your traction control kills up to 60-50% of the yeah, traction the stock. control. Stock one kills up to 50% of your traction control. And when you remove the fuse, you've got 100%. So basically you let the wheels spin 
which is what you want in the desert when you're in the sand and your car's gonna look like this at the end of it's the still, trip uh, neat today. it's still clean it's today, still clean today. <laughs> but yeah if you go to the sand you need to be prepared car at a time the car makes the loop comes down and then the next car this is a very steep climb you'll see going up now i think this is what we were doing last time as well mm -hmm. yeah. but you need a lot of power to go up there you need to take the exact same loop okay and while coming down you take it nice and slow all right nice and slow slow down especially here there's a small bump here coming down one car at a time when the next car reaches where i am now the next car goes <laughs> 